Hello my friends, we have some sort of the movement today near to Bakhmut. Russians took this part of the city unfortunately and now they are bordering the main part of the city, the central part through the Bakhmut Kar River. And here let's check uh, the timeline. So it was yesterday they were at this place, it was in a grey area and today they got it under control and I believe that tomorrow they are gonna take the entire area of the eastern side of the Bakhmut city. Also they moved quite a bit here on the north, so yesterday and today, but here they move westbound and still unable to close this gap that is still controlled by Ukrainian forces. And just to remind you, yesterday the Ukrainian general command decided to hold Bakhmut. It means that we'll have more reinforcements in that area. I would say that the situation is so critical for Ukrainian forces out there, but there is the small chance for us to win this battle for the city. About the possible Ukrainian counterattacks in the area, so far we don't see any kind of the signs showing that it has been started. The Ukrainian side still collects the forces near to Slavansk, Siversk, Konstantinivka and Chasov Yar for the possible counterattack. My friends, before we go to the news, let me introduce you the partner of my channel. It is the Atlas VPN and they came out with a big deal. It's the special discount for my subscribers and viewers. So now you can get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 183 per month and let me tell you more about it. And the sponsor for today's video is Atlas VPN. It has military encryption standards strongly securing your data and your devices from being reached by government unwanted ads and also hackers. Yes, you may say hackers, why do they need my account? Well, actually my friends, I got personal experience that my pilot blog channel dedicated to aviation was hacked, then I was using public Wi-Fi, all of my videos were deleted and after that hackers told me to send Bitcoin for them and they will open access to my own account. I didn't transfer anything and just started the new channel with the same name. And obviously after that case I used the VPN all of the time and for me personally Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature, so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device, then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message, I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection, then you watch movies on Netflix. And also by changing your virtual location, you may get access to watch all of the movies, all of the series on Netflix platform. It helped me a lot. Atlas VPN helps me to access some of the websites that are blocked in my country. Patreon website is one of them. My friends, and now please check out the link in the video description just below. Join the 3 years offer for 183 per month and you will have 83% of discount. You also have 3 months for free. The offer is time limited with my personal link, so please hurry up to join the club. Atlas VPN supports my channel for a long time and also they help Ukrainian people. The last month they participated the event where they collected 1 million euros to buy the special raiders for Ukrainian army. Atlas VPN, you do a great job. I have just started recording this video then I got this information. Those are explosions in Berdansk. Berdansk is the port city on the south of Ukraine and now this city is occupied by the Russian forces. There is the airfield out there plus the big seaport where Russian ships were destroyed the last summer or maybe spring. Well, judging on those lights that could be the airfield or some sort of the factory. So far we are in lack of the information that is coming from that side. In a few days Ukraine will get 10 more Leopard 2A4 tanks from Poland so together we'll have 14 tanks from our allies. But according to Der Spiegel resource, there were some sort of the problems with German Leopards. They were in lack of the spare parts that needed to be produced because Germany cannot take the spare parts because they need them for the Leopard 2A7 and they will send to Ukraine Leopard 2A6 models. But anyways, I think till the late spring we'll have all of the tanks which are needed for the counter-offensive operation on the south part of Ukraine and maybe not only that. There. And Ukraine is already using the JDAM rockets, which are the extended range modification for Ukraine with a maximum range up to 72 kilometers. Our airplanes were modified to carry those bombs. 
So today we got the confirmation that they are in Ukraine and they have already been used by Ukrainian Air Force. However, we don't have this simple modification. We have the modification with some sort of the wings. So it's like a flying gliding bomb. This is the most destructive weaponry that we can potentially have because aviation bombs they have a very significant warheads they are much bigger compared to artillery shells or hammers well attackums rocket also may spread severe damage in the area but unfortunately we don't have attackums so far and russia goes on a total defense we have the satellite and drone images from the south part of ukraine they were building some of the series of the trenches and dots out there preparing for the possible Ukrainian counterattack. And Ukrainian forces also creating the trenches and more barricades on the north part of Ukraine. And today the self-proclaimed president of Belarus Lukashenko stated and confirmed that Russian AVAX airplane Illusion 76A50 modification got some sort of the damages in Michalysh airfield which is very close to Minsk. Also he said that those who did it were arrested and the guy who was arrested actually got the Russian citizenship. However, before the Russian propaganda said that this airplane wasn't attacked at all, it was hugs, it was made new but really this airplane was attacked and got minor damages to the main antenna and other antenna which is on the front part over here on the hump. Also Lukashenko in his speech called President Zelensky a neat or a crumb. That is how Google translates the word Gnida, which is kind of offensive. But before Lukashenko said that Russia will never enter Ukraine from the Belarus territory, so we may call him a neat and bastard for sure. All right, according to the British intelligence, there's the big problem with ammunitions for the Wagner forces. Before it was the agreement with Wagner's and regular Russian army that they will have their artillery shells, so they used their own shells more frequently and widely near to the Bakhmut area, but finally there were no ammunitions supplied. And that fuels the disagreement between Prigozhin and Shoigu, However, Wagner still have lots of the forces and they may try to encircle Bakhmut city. That is what they are trying right now, to encircle the city, but Ukraine sent reinforcements to that area and they successfully withstand Russian attacks. The problem here for the Wagner soldiers is that they have severe losses in their elite forces, the soldiers who passed African conflicts and Syria who got the military experience and now being wasted near Bakhmut. According to the independent journalists report, Words. Yes, it's hard to count the casualties from the Russian side, but it could be up to 30,000 soldiers who lost their lives just from the Wagner group in the Bahmut area. And Wagner is very limited with that resource with their special forces, unlike prisoners. And Prigozhin complained that they cannot take prisoners any longer, so they were thrown like a meat, like a cannon fodder on the front lines. They've done all of the dirty job, and then elite forces were attacking from the flanks but now the elite forces are everywhere and they cannot train them very fast sometimes it takes years to get the military experience from other conflicts to fight successfully in ukraine and even some russian z patriots say that it's just the waste of the russian best resources the forces that are still capable to move forward if you look at the front lines you will see that the only place where russia successfully moves forward is near to the bahamut city. So do not underestimate Wagner, but they cannot change the outcome of this war because they're very limited in their resource. For now they count up to 20,000 soldiers. Strategically this war may be won just with the good supplies, communication and resources. Now Ukraine is getting more resources and Russia is losing resources. Speaking about the Russian supplies, communication, it's very terrible. It seems like we have the identity of the Ukrainian hero, the soldier who said Slava Ukraini in the face of the Russian soldiers who just executed and shoot the guy. The information was published by the Ukrainian journalist Butusev and the name of this warrior was Matsyevsky Alexander Ihorevich and he lost his life actually around one month ago and here is his photo some days before he was captured by the Russian soldiers 
as you can see he has some sort of the injury or wound on his forehead and also we have the same mark on this guy and really they look very similar this face and this face i believe it was alexander he's from nijin territorial defense and before territorial defense were just protecting the territory where they are located so if you live for example in Nizhin or Kiev you should have protected that particular area but then Russians moved away from that place and also from Nizhin they were thrown to Bakhmut area to fight on the front lines so far I don't know about his activity before the war but for sure he voluntarily went to the territorial defense then Russia attacked Ukraine. And before this morning we got the information that this guy was Timothy Shadura. I don't think they look the same or even similar. I think the version of Butusov is more real so basically I see more similarities out here and the ukrainian soldiers went to meet the mother of alexander in nizhin and she said that it was her son then she watched the video of his execution but anyways from what i understood we have the access to the body and medics will prove whether it's alexander or any kind of the other person without the official paper from doctors no one can say 100 percent but what this soldier did still amazes me my friends because it's the kind of the rare attitude and it shows the dedication to protect the motherland to the people of ukraine it's uh, very rare nowadays and Yes, we have that spirit in Ukrainian army as well. Would I behave the same? I don't think so. But if they say it's your last words, I may say Slava Ukraini just in case of imminent death. But if there is the chance to escape, I think most of the people would not do this sacrifice. And then we identify his name. For sure he will be the hero not just now, but maybe even for centuries for Ukrainian people. And for sure you'll find the comments from the Russian bots saying that this guy died for nothing. But truly, he sacrificed his life. He didn't know even if this video would be published. But luckily, somehow it was published and he became the symbol of the fight of Ukrainian resistance. Remember the Russian ship Moscow? And the story behind that ship and the Ukrainian snake island where Ukrainian soldiers said, go and find yourself Russian ship. They say that they will not surrender under the risk of being totally destroyed by the Russian military. And finally, the Russian ship was destroyed in a few months. Karma, right? So the story became iconic, not just for Ukraine, but for other countries. And here, the story about this soldier is even more closer to us because it's not about the ships or the islands, it's about the human beings. And yes, it's the shocking story. If you haven't watched this video, I do not recommend you to watch it because it could be very sensitive for you. And this story will rise the spirit of Ukrainian defenders and support of Ukraine around the world. He said glory to Ukraine and we reply glory to heroes. To some of the international news, there are some protests in Georgia right now, not in United States, the state of Georgia. No, it's in Georgia, in Caucasus region, ex-Soviet Republic. There are some clashes because parliament introduced the restrictive laws against the media resources and that limits the freedom of speech. The laws are similar that were taken in Russia. Plus, the United States Embassy in Belize say that it's the dark day for democracy in Georgia. And as you can see, Georgians do not support that as well. Actually, the Georgian government is very strange. They didn't support the sanctions against Russia, even though Russia attacked them back in 2008. So I wouldn't say that the current Georgian government is leading the country towards democracy way. But I'm not Georgian, so it's up to Georgians to decide whether this government should be removed or not. The same as I respect, for example, the decision of Switzerland 
Switzerland not to re-export the arms for Ukraine. And just to remind you, in general, some of the politician initiative group decided to re-export the arms to the European countries, and the European countries on their turn might have supplied the weaponry to Ukraine. So today it was voting 23 parliamentaries, I hope I translated correctly, voted against the deal and just 18 supported the deal two of the parliamentaries didn't vote and it's nothing unusual for switzerland their country goes with the same way of being as neutral as possible luckily still they provide the humanitarian help for ukraine and they support ukrainian refugees but if someone dared to attack switzerland as it happened to georgia in 2008 I think they will never stay neutral as Georgian government stays right now. Great news for today, it was the major exchange between the Russian and Ukrainian prisoners of war. So 130 Ukrainian defenders returned back to their homeland. Reuters reports that Ukraine is seeking the United States clustered bombs to be adapted on their drones. I wonder what kind of the size those drones should be. But cluster bombs are forbidden weaponry in 120 countries, so I'm in a great doubt that those bombs will be supplied to Ukraine. However, Russian side uses them quite often. My friends, now press the like to this video and also don't forget to check the link for the Atlas VPN, the sponsor and also the partner of my channel, where you can get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 183 per month. It's the big deal for my subscribers and viewers and it expires very soon, so hurry up to join the club. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.